Hey y'all, it's your boy Rico. And Sam. And this week we have a very special guest for you, and it is our friend Anemone. Hi everybody, I'm Anemone. I'm a clinical social worker at Out Youth, which is an LGBTQ youth center here. And I also work over at the Kind Clinic and run the Transgender Wellness Program. We wanted to like make a video with her because one of the many things she does is she's a therapist. And I know a lot of y'all like want to see a therapist for whatever reason it may be. So we figured to ask her like four or five basic questions to figure out how to get a therapist, all this fun stuff. How do you go about finding like a specific, like LGBT specific therapist? Great. Um, there's a couple different ways. You can ask around at other organizations that work a lot with trans people or LGBTQ people. Um, often cities have like lists of therapists that um, do that work. You can also look on a site called Psychology Today that most therapists have kind of a listing there and you can search by things um, around your identity or around your insurance or things like that. So you can type in like keywords like trans or like queer or gay yeah. or lesbian There's or whatever. There's like a checkbox of the things. So oh. People work with transgender people or and then people in your age range or things like oh, that. Oh, okay, cool. So let's say you find one that um, you think you may like and you make a phone call asking like to like make the appointment. Like, right. How do you go about that? What questions should you be asking? Right. Well, sometimes they'll, the therapist will want to do like a short phone consultation to see if you're a good fit. And that's the time you can ask them questions or also you can ask them just on the first session. You can ask um, kind of whatever you want. It's totally fine to ask if they've worked with people with your identities before or how much experience they have working with trans or non-binary people. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes people can be squeamish about asking those questions, but I think they're really important. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I, I could see it being uncomfortable because it's like you're interviewing a therapist, right. but they're, you need them to help you. It feels yeah, you know, yeah. weird. It's like, so what are your credentials? But <laughs> yeah, I guess it is important to ask because you don't want to waste this like for, like session and it's like you realize you're their first trans transgender right. person that they... Right. Yeah. yeah, so definitely important to ask those questions to find the right one because like not every therapist fits for every person. You know what I mean? So Definitely. Um, so if you're like specifically like looking for a therapist... Um, not necessarily because you have, like, you want to talk to a therapist about, like, some, like, emotional problems or whatever is going on in your life, but specifically because you are a transgender person who wants to start hormones and yes. you don't have, like, an informed consent to a place around you, is it okay to, like, ask, like, will you provide me a letter? Is it okay to, like, ask if you, like, how, how long it takes to yeah. provide a letter? It's totally great to ask those questions. Some people will tell you they don't know, or it might be a year or two of counseling, and those are probably people you want to steer clear of because yeah. that's a lot of money to throw into a therapist who might not write a letter. Yeah. Um, most people who do it routinely, a letter for hormones really shouldn't take more than two or three sessions. Um, some people do it in one. Some people take a little bit longer, but if you just want a letter, it should not be that long or that expensive. What should you expect for your first session? Right. First session, there's going to be some like paperwork to get out of the way, and usually a therapist will just want to get to know you. Um, and it's also your opportunity to get to know the therapist, because it's really important that you like and trust your therapist. Because yeah. Therapy is a relationship between two people, yeah. and if you just don't really jive with your therapist, it's not going to go well. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention, like making the phone call, uh, the awkwardness of like payment. Like, how do you go about asking, like, right. do you do out-of-pocket insurance? Like, how does this work? Yeah, it's great to be just totally upfront about that. Therapists talk about money all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not weird to ask how much it costs because some really low-cost therapy costs $10 a session. Some really expensive therapy costs $200 or $300 a session. For an hour? For an hour. Oh, that's yeah. insane. Oh, it's wild. It's oh, insane. Yeah. No, I remember. So you want to know, if you have that kind of money, that's fine. But if you don't, yeah. You don't need to wait until you're in the session. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember when I first wanted to go to therapy around 19 because I was, you know, gender queer or exploring that I was not female. Um, yeah, it was really expensive and it took years and years because I was so nervous to make a phone call because it's like, I know it's probably going to be a lot of money and I felt awkward asking them how much it is and all this. And it was really like stressful and depressing. And then I heard someone mention sliding scale. Mm -hmm. And I'm not entirely sure what that is, like, exactly. Right. It just means anybody who has a range of their costs depending on people's ability to pay. So sometimes people have really wide sliding scales, like $30 to $200. And sometimes therapists have pretty tight ones from, like, 80 to 120 
Gotcha. Okay. Is that like honor code or is that like, you know what I mean? Like Usually it's honor code. Usually it's a conversation between you and the therapist. Um, gotcha. Sometimes people have like strict cutoffs though. So. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, because, you know, um, when I was wanting to find a therapist, I was in Florida when I was around 19. But I moved, I, when I moved to Austin, I was like really thinking I was trans. So I reached out and then I found a therapist and she asked me like how much I could afford. And that felt so weird. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, what do I say? Like, I don't want to go too low or anything. And that's totally fine to, I think it's good to have a number ahead of time for what you can pay. Yeah, I did. I was like 30. And then she's like, okay. I was like, shit. Yeah. Right. 30 cool. session. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. It is possible if you're broke and don't have insurance. Yeah. The other thing about being on the phone is you don't have to give a lot of details. You don't need to like pour out your life story to the therapist right away. Yeah. You can just kind of say like, I want to talk about gender or I'm trans or I think I might be trans and I want to talk about that. Or like I'm depressed or I'm dealing with anxiety. Yeah. If they need more detail, they'll ask. But sometimes okay. people think they need to like, like tell everything. <laughs> tell right every symptom yes. that they've <laughs> ever felt in every thing that they've ever been diagnosed with in one go. Mm. And like, it's always your prerogative in therapy to talk about things or not talk about things. Right. Like, you don't need to be an open book to a therapist. Yeah, for you sure. You can say, actually, that's too uncomfortable for me right now. Maybe we'll get to it later. Yeah, I definitely remember some times where I was just a little fucking brat in therapy. <laughs> oh my God, I used to be a little shit. Really? Whenever, yeah, whenever she would like talk about things that I didn't want to talk about, I would just completely shut down. I would start playing games. And I was, kid? no, I wasn't. <laughs> I was like a teenager. Obviously, it was I mean, home. I was like 11 or 12 or something like that. I remember like, I'd be like upside down on the couch, just like <laughs> fucking bullshit. And I, <laughs> I'd be playing with Play-Doh. <laughs> She'd be like, you don't want to talk about this? We're like, no. <laughs> oh my god. It was great. <laughs> Loved it. Loved that. Oh my god. <laughs> um, initial, like, red flags to look out for when you're looking for a therapist. Yeah, if somebody um, says they've never worked with trans people before. Yeah. It's a red flag for sure. It's a yeah. red flag. Um, if they want kind of seem to want you to prove how trans you are okay. or they're like so or if they're kind of asking you to give them the basic trans narrative if they're like oh so have you known forever or, mm -hmm. so you've oh, always really? wanted to play with trucks and you're like um, <laughs> <Heard>. <laughs> maybe but <laughs> okay gotcha okay yeah cool anything else is not like necessarily like trans related that like are red flags for like talking to a therapist initially i think it's so personal that like okay. if you don't feel comfortable that's a valid reason not to see a therapist absolutely so just base it on your comfortability right um so i think that wraps it up for this video um we definitely love anemone and we'd love to have her uh videos in the future um so if you guys would like to see more of us please drop a comment below let, let us know if you have any questions about you know, seeing a therapist or um, anything specific regarding therapy for transgender people, definitely drop us a question and we'll, uh, we'll talk to her about getting her in some future videos and discussing more things. Yeah, I'd say this is your opportunity to literally ask a therapist a question. And it's free. <laughs> <laughs> for now. For now. <laughs> All right, y'all. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Please like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. And we will see you next week, y'all. Bye.